All right, so I've got the head now, and I've got all these internal edges softened and blended, and I can blend those a little bit more. I erased it, the, the hard edges on the mouth with a 100% soft eraser, but now I can go in with a lower opacity, bigger eraser, and transition it just a little bit softer in some areas, but I like the drama of some of it. So I don't need to do that everywhere. Very good. Now, next class, I'll show you how we can refine this once we've pieced it more together, how we can brighten up the teeth using the dodge tool, how I can sharpen up the fur on the bat ear by using the sharpen tool. These are all not direct adjustments, but direct tools that can be used. Now that I've got the head, I don't need to worry about these outside edges because they would take a long time to cut out right now. And they don't overlap with any other part of my creature. So instead of worrying about those, especially the individual whiskers, I'm just going to do a rough cut around it. Just delete that out. And now I want to bolt all of the head together. So I've built the engine. And now I want to treat it all as one thing. So I could merge them all and make them one layer, but that would mean I don't get to treat the ear separately than the eye, you know, for later on. So instead, we're going to put them into a group together. And so what I do is I hold down shift and I select all the layers that I used for the head. Which is basically every, every layer I've rasterized so far. It's all there. Once they're all selected, I use the little icon at the bottom of the layer window that looks like a folder. It's next to the new layer icon that looks like a post-it. I click on that folder and it will merge all of those selected layers and put them into a group. What's great about a group is you can turn it on and off together you can move it together. So now I can move this bolted together group of my head. Whoops. I need to turn off auto select. I can just select the group. Whoops, I accidentally put my sketch in there. How did I do that? Which one is my sketch? There it is. So I can move my sketch outside of the group. There we go. And now I can move that group all together onto my sketch. Not only can I move it all together, I can also transform it all together. So that's the head of my creature. If I want to, I can, while selecting the group, not the layer, I can hit Command T and I can resize it, rotate it, shift it, whatever I want. And I'm going to go ahead and let it be a little bit bigger. But I might rotate it a little bit. A really impressive roar here. And now I want the little body to attach. So once that group is done, I'll mark it with a color by right clicking near the eye and just picking a color. I'll use green because the head is basically finished. And now I want to play with the body. So I'm going to take this warthog and its clawed feet and its torso, because it's really good to get the collarbone, the rib cage, and the forearms all from one reference, because that's all kind of bolted together. And I got to make sure it works with my creature and its head. So I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to rough cut around it. Don't worry about any of the cast shadows. I just want the rib cage. Don't necessarily want the pot belly, but 
hit Command-J, delete the smart object it comes from, and then start moving it behind. For the moment, I'm going to get turn off my sketch so I can pay attention to the colors of this warthog reference. I can see I need to warp it a little bit and transition it. I encourage you to try this a little bit more than you just change the size because you can really shift where the joints are with the warp tool. And because it's all organic, it should still make sense. You can see the anatomy underneath. What I need is a nice transition between the, the bottom of the jaw and the neck and the chest here. So that's an element I'll need. And I'm just trying to get this foreground rib cage and collarbone. Once I have it placed, then I can start playing with its direct adjustments, starting with levels. Going to darken it. Well, I don't know. I think I'm going to limit its highlights instead of darkening its midtones because its shadows are plenty dark. And I might even limit its shadows a tiny bit. Then I'm going to play with its color balance, make it a lot warmer. I want to play against that green. All right, now I realize I don't need all of this extra space. So I'm going to use my crop tool. And I'm going to still give myself some extra space because I'm still going to be bringing in other elements, but I don't need to waste all that memory now that I pieced a lot of it together. Turn on my sketch. And maybe move my sketch off to the side so that I can reference it as I'm building it. And save it. Now I can move on to some of my other references, like the body. I have this mushroom I want to use for the spots, kind of at the back of the haunch. You can see it's plenty big, plenty sharp and in focus. I want to rough cut that out. The only thing I would be nicer if it was on a white or single colored background, so it was easy to cut out the edges, but this will work. I can lock the layers. I don't want to accidentally be moving and changing. Like I want to lock the head, use the padlock, lock my sketch, and lock the, the forearms right now. So that when I say, I can even lock the background. So that when I say auto select layer, it won't accidentally move something I don't want it to move. I can move the mushroom forward and backwards. I want it behind because this is kind of for the haunch and the hips and the back end. I can rotate it, Command T. I can hold down Shift and stretch it. And then I don't want it to be too recognizable as this type of mushroom, so I'm going to play with levels. I'm going to limit its highlights a little bit. Going to play with its color balance. Yeah, 
yeah, as I transition it, as I erase, those will come through. And then I can always use clone stamp next class to kind of equalize out the textures too. So much to do. And I'm going to use hue saturation. I'm going to shift the hue so it's not that recognizable red. But I'm not going to push it too far so it gets too monochrome. But I might make it a little bit more orange. And then just desaturate it a little bit. Yeah, and then how do I get that texture to come through with the warthog belly? Well, that's the internal edges. So I'm going to use a soft edge to 100% eraser, pretty big. Get rid of that hard edge. And once that hard edge is out of there, then I can go very low opacity and show a little bit of an overlap of the fur, just for now. Okay. And then if I need to revisit the adjustments, like I might want to revisit levels now and get that, that brightness a little bit back or deepen the shadows a little bit. I can do that. Now I need back legs. For this, I have lots of options. I have the hedgehog for the back and for the back legs. I kind of like that. I take this hedgehog. I love that back leg. I'll go ahead and place it, bring it to the top just underneath the head group, so I can lasso around it easily. It's obviously a lot here I don't need. But I want that foot. Duplicate it, erase the smart object, transform it. Oops. Encourage you to warp it a little bit, make it more suit your anatomy. Scale it. Lots of nice overlap there. If I stretch it the right way, I can even use it a little bit as overlap for the, the neck as a transition. I don't tend to make things easy on myself, but that would make things a little bit easier. And push down the curve of the back a little. And now, Let's play with the adjustments. I like to play with the direct adjustments before I start erasing away and transitioning because we know how much color can change it, color and lighting. So I go to levels, then color balance, get rid of some of the yellow here, a little bit more red in, some blue in the shadows, some cyan. Then put some yellow back into the highlights. Play with the saturation. Shift the hue, see if there's anything that makes more sense. Oh, it makes it a little bit more sense to be a little bit brighter to me. And now I can go in with my soft edged eraser at 100% first. Big and strong, and work on these 